Today, I'm bringing you guys along with me to an estate sale where I found an item that's potentially worth over $10,000. How much is that one? That'd be $50. And at the end of this video, I'll take it to an expert, see what they have to say. Did I hit it big or did I take a big L? Find out later in the video. For now, let's hop into the sale. So here we are at today's estate sale and the listing for the sale looked super enticing. In the photos, they had all kinds of designer and high-end goods, everything from clothing to hard goods. It just looked like it was going to be an amazing sale. Uh, no, I, depends how I do, we'll see. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was not in the first group of people to make it into the sale. People have been camping out since like 3 a.m. for it, so I was not in the first group to make it into the house. However, when I finally got inside, I went straight to where I knew the items that I was interested in would be, and that is these cases right up front filled with a bunch of high-end designer pens. Now that might sound a little weird to a lot of you guys out there. Pens, why are you interested in pens? Well, these aren't any ordinary pens. These are the Rolexes of pens. These are the high-end collectible things. These are your Waterfords. These are your Montblancs, your Viscontis. These things are incredibly valuable, which unfortunately for me was reflected in the prices they were asking for these things. As you can see here in the first case in front of me, this is what I would call like the mid-tier pens. These are the pens that are ranging from like 50 bucks up to like maybe 200, which is kind of crazy for a pen, I know. But look at this second case over here. These pens over here are the creme de la creme. These are the high-end Rolexes of pens. These are the ones that are costing 300, 400, 500, over a thousand dollars for a single pen. And actually, I think the highest priced one that they had here at the sale was priced at $17.50, which is just under what I could get for it over on eBay. Over there, it's going for around two grand. Now, I came into the sale expecting to spend a lot of money. I came with a lot of cash ready to buy, but by the prices that I was seeing, I just didn't think that the profit margins were going to be worth it compared to what I was spending. So I ended up just skipping out on all the pens. So after realizing the pens weren't going to work out for me, I decided to pivot over to the bedrooms to check out some of the clothing. Unfortunately, it looked like someone had got there before me and that a bunch of the higher end stuff had already been picked through. However, I still was able to make a few good finds. It's kind of a cool one, look at that. Paula Stewart, muslin mink. <laughs> That's funky. I'll try these shirts, $5 in this marked. Is that a shirt? I'd say that's a shirt. Let's grab it. So as you just saw, this first piece here was a Paula Stewart Muslin Mink sweater. I had never seen this brand before, but look at that. That is just a cool, unique piece. And this is the kind of stuff that I have no problem picking up when I see it, even if I don't know the brand, because this style is in right now and this should sell really, really well. After I ended up looking up, it turns out that this thing is worth around 50 to 60 bucks. Let me see this sitting down here. 1985 NFC Championships. Trench. Huh. Oh, look at that. There's another little bear sweatshirt. Or sweater, I should say. All right. Cliff England. That's good. That's nothing. That's just an old bears. That's definitely coming home. I think I'll grab the other one too, the 1985. So the next two pieces I ended up grabbing were a couple of Bears pieces as you guys just saw. The first one was this 1985 Division Champs Chicago Bears hoodie. Anything vintage is gonna sell. And then we got a vintage Chicago Bears Cliff Angle sweater. There you go, there's the tag for you guys right there. If you ever see that tag on something vintage football, pick it up, it's probably gonna be worth something. These sweaters I've sold a lot in the past and they can range all over the place, anywhere from like 50 bucks to over $250 for the right teams in the right style. So this one right here, I think will be worth around the $80 mark. That is just an awesome, awesome pickup. After finishing up in that closet, I decided to check out all the stuff that was piled up on the bed where I ended up pulling out one sweater that I grabbed. This is a Preswick and Moore cashmere sweater. If you followed me for a while, you know I do a lot of cashmere during the winter because it sells super fast. This is an easy $25. Moving on from there, I made my way into the next bedroom where in the top drawer of this dresser, I made a nice little discovery. Some Ray-Bans. Some more Ray-Bans. 
That's right, I found a couple different pairs of Ray-Bans hidden in there, as well as a few others. Got some nice Tommy Bahama aviators, a pair of Dolce & Gabbana eyeglasses, and lastly, a pair of vintage Gucci eyeglasses. That's why I always see what's inside drawers. Get it? See? Like, like glasses? No. Following that, I noticed this pile of scarves sitting on this chair, and throughout the house I noticed that there were a couple of framed Hermes scarves up on the wall, so I figured there might be a chance that there were some nice ones hidden away in this little pile. Salvador Ferragamo scarf. Okay, I'll take that one. I don't know much about scarves, but I do know name brands. That one's just cool, look at that. Field, Patricia Field. That's just cool one, I'm gonna grab that one for the style. Yeah, this scarf right here, I bought for the same reason that I bought that sweater earlier. It just has that awesome look to it. This is a nice like pop arty style. I knew it was going to have some kind of value behind it just based on the look. I'm telling y'all certain styles just sell regardless of the name brand. And then the only other scarf I ended up getting out of that pile was this basic monogrammed YSL scarf. And after picking up those scarves in the bedroom, I did one more walk around this small little apartment when I noticed a closet in the front that I hadn't noticed when I initially walked in, and I ended up finding a really nice piece in there. It's a nice little polo ruff on leather jacket. Oh boy, so look at that. It's a nice looking one. I've done really well on these jackets in the past. This is one of those ones that's a really soft, buttery leather. It's in very, very good condition. One thing you always want to check out on leather jackets is the condition. If it's in worse condition, it's going to go for less. If it is in great condition like this one, it's going to sell for a premium. I think this jacket right here, I can get between $150 and $200 for. And finally, I went back up front to where all the pens were and decided to take a look at the other stuff that was up there when I came across this. How much is that one? Maybe fifty dollars. I know it's hard to see in the footage right there, but what I was holding and what I asked him about was this very nice Vacheron watch. Now I am not a watch person by any means, in fact I steer away from most watches because just like with the designer handbags, they are heavily faked, however Vacheron is a watch brand that I know to look out for, it's right up there with like Rolex and Omega, so this definitely caught my eye and when he said 50 bucks, I whipped out my phone and started researching and what I saw blew me away. Some of the watches that I was seeing in this style were going anywhere between $2,000 and $10,000 a piece. So uh, yeah, I decided to go ahead and take a chance on it because maybe I just hit it big. But I'll come back to this in just a minute. I actually took out my GoPro and recorded myself in the car what I was thinking and what I ended up doing when I found this. So I'll come back to this in just a minute. Let's go ahead and check out from the sale. And then I got three sweater, four sweaters. Three sweaters and a jacket. It's a Polo Ralph Lauren. A bear, two bears, and then that little fuzzy guy. What was I at with this? That was uh, 150. 50 bucks on a jacket. Take it 200 cash. Yeah. I'll do 200 cash, that's fine. All right, just finished up at that sale and it ended up being a bit of a question mark for me. I definitely paid more than what I was expecting to at that sale. I paid up on a lot of items and I didn't get a lot of the items that I originally came to get. However, even though I did pay up for the stuff that I got, I still think there's still money to be made. However, the reason, the big reason that I decided to go ahead and pay up on the stuff was because of one particular purchase, this little guy right here, this Vacheron watch. Now, normally I don't deal with high-end watches or high-end designer items in general because I know there are a ton of fakes out there. However, because of the quality of stuff at this particular sale, there was a bunch of really high-end stuff in there. I mean, you got your Montblanc pens, you got your Hermes scarves. I figured that there was going to be a pretty good chance that this could be a real authentic Vacheron because of the quality of the other stuff that was at the sale. Basically, if this thing's real, I just made bank. And if this isn't real, I had to rely on the profit I'll make from the other items, which honestly probably won't be too super good considering the prices I paid for them. It'll still be profit, it just won't be super, super good profit. So what I've decided to do is to take this thing to get authenticated. I'm not gonna waste any time. There is a Vacheron store right down in the heart of Chicago, so I'm gonna head down there right now and see if this thing is legit. 
So that's exactly what I did. I hopped in my car, drove downtown, and walked into the Vacheron store to see if they could tell me if this thing was legit or not. All right, here we are at the store. Let's uh, let's see what they say. Hello. Hi, I'm good. I was wondering if you could check out a watch for me. I don't know if it's nice. real or not. It's not real. Yeah. It's not? Okay. I'm pretty sure just by looking at it from a distance. Yeah. I figured you guys would know best, so. How were you guys able to tell just so I know? I could just yeah. kind of tell that Vashon probably wouldn't do a second scan like that. Even okay. though I really actually didn't take a look at it. I just kind of assumed. Okay. But then when you actually turn it over, like, you know, that the movement is not like finished to a level that Vashon would okay. finish something to. Okay. And that's how you can tell it's not authentic. And also the, the the weight, if it were rose gold or yellow gold and such, there would be well, a... I think, there, there, it's, I think it's a two-tone metal on the back, right? Yeah. And yeah, and Vashon wouldn't have done that yeah. either. Typically, okay. they wouldn't have printed like Vashon on the crystal. And then you would have like, you know, no brand that actually does like a high luxury, like something would put genuine leather okay. like yeah. on the actual strap of the watch. Okay. Oh, thank you Priceless guys. Leather. I appreciate it's it very cool much. Thank you guys. You know, if you, you didn't know about watches, then you I have know. zero idea about watches. That's why I came down. I was you like, know, if there's anything else that we can help you with, you know, awesome. as you sort through. Please. Awesome. Thank you guys. Pleasure indeed. Thank you. Have a good one. Uh, yep. As you just heard, unfortunately, it is a fake. Took a big L on that one, down 50 bucks. But look at that, to me, for someone who's not into watches at all, that looks like a very convincing replica. But to them, the experts, the people who deal with these watches every single day, they were able to tell that this thing was not legit almost instantly. And as you heard in the video, those very nice gentlemen working at the store were able to point out a few things that should raise red flags in my head in the future if I ever do come across one of these again. But man, do I wish this ended up being legit. That would have been that would have been a crazy find. You live, you learn. That's part of the game. That is part of reselling. Realistically, what I should have done while I was at the sale is taken my time to really vet this thing. I should have looked it up on my phone. I should have known what I was buying before I bought it. So this is 100% a mistake on my end. And it's something that happens from time to time. And hopefully this goes to show that even though I've been doing this for a while, I still make mistakes. It's just part of the game. It's something that everybody is going to go through at some point. So for you guys who are just starting out, if you make a mistake, it is not the end of the world don't let it get you down just move on and keep looking forward and actually here let's share this down below in the comments let me know if you have ever bought something and it turned out to be a mistake was it fake was it not real was it just something that you thought was going to be worth more than it was let me know a mistake that you have made down below and hopefully i'm not the only one anyways guys that's going to wrap things up for now i hope that you guys all enjoyed if you did make sure to go down low smash that like button for me and if you'd like to see more content just like this be sure to hit that subscribe button Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Till next time, keep on treasure hunting. Peace.